How do you know or increase the value of your real estate business? Well, my next guest on the one-on-one -on -one series, Kristen Porter, has ONO Legal, which some people say, oh no, legal, and that's why she named it. But she has some fascinating insights in particularly pertinent to business owners, because that's all she does, legal representation for real estate business owners. What's your business worth? How do you maximize its value? And what's your plan to exit your business? And she'll help you with all of that right from beginning to end. Here she is. Kristen, um, ONO Legal. It's a very unique name. I love it. How'd you come up with that? So it started, um, you know, ONO oh to avoid that ONO oh no moment of regret. But where it really started, mm. um, I was in house still um, mm. for a large real estate brand, mm. and I had a line of different agents coming into my office that particular day that needed help with some tricky situations um, and pretty much at the end of each conversation it was you did what <laughs> um, and oh <clears throat> um, right. and so because I'd had that experience that day it's saying oh you did what OF and um, yeah. yeah so oh no came from that. So no is a kind of version of the other word. That, the other word yeah, because, um, version. yeah, I didn't, think, um, I didn't think ASIC would like if I uh, tried to register that. Actually, it'd probably be quite popular with a real estate fraternity. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You'd certainly get a lot of attention, wouldn't you? Yeah, so it, um, I suppose, started as a little bit of a joke, but it stuck and I'm um, quite fond of it now. It is. It, it does stick. It's a great name. You specialise only in real estate um, agents and their businesses, don't yes. you? That's that's your area of special speciality. Okay, can you tell us what are the main pillars that you look after agents with? So what what, yep. what is important to them and what you're good at? Yeah, so we help real estate agents principals to yep. shield their assets, okay. to future proof their relationships with their clients, staff, and business partners. Um, we help them expand faster through buying and selling rent rolls, for example, okay. um, and also then to plan their exit. So we help with the whole business life cycle mm. um, for all the legal needs um, that a business owner would need through mm. that. And I'm thinking that probably um, your assistance early on in those processes rather than at the end of it, so well, I need my legal to, to formalise this, mm -hmm. is that what you would recommend a business owner? and, and and from a planning perspective to start talking to you early and have some, some um, you know, uh, a vision in mind for where they want to go with their business and perhaps even where they want to exit their business? Yeah, and you know, my business coach has always said, you know, start with the end in mind. Okay. And we definitely, we love helping startups because if you think about it, when you are new to business, that's often the time the biggest mistakes are made but what we find is agents don't necessarily have the budget for the legals because budget's going into brand and website and getting clients yeah. in the door so you've got revenue. Yep. And so we've actually just um, launched a startup sorted program um, where agents can come in and get all of their legals sorted. Um, we have several different models. We've got the usual law firm model where we do everything for you and that comes with the usual law firm price tag which most mm. startups really don't have the budget for. Yep. So we've created um, a program and also online digital templates with kind of explainer videos okay. to make law more accessible to everyone in the industry. Because what we were finding is agents at about the three to five year mark would decide it's now time. It's now time for us to sort all of our legals. Mm. Um, but like you said, it is better to do it right from the beginning because that is when the mistakes can be made mm. and you're setting yourself up for that expansion and growth and exit later on. I think it's a good point. And I know that you focus on providing economical uh, legal services to agents because and business owners because for a lot of 
um, business owners, they have a, a question they're unable to answer, they need legal advice, they think, oh God, do I pick the phone up to my lawyer? That's going to cost me, you know, <laughs> telephone numbers. <Yeah. laughs> and so um, you're offering an alternative to that sort of, uh, oh, I've got to keep away from the lawyer. You're making it easy for the agent to engage the lawyer mm -hmm. and you can work with them economically right through their life cycle of business ownership. Yes, absolutely. And so we always start with a free 10 minute chat because we feel it's actually really important that you get to know us so you can work out if we're the right people to help you because you need to feel mm. comfortable sure. with your advisors. Yeah. And then we have the traditional model where we do everything for you, mm. um, but we do have other digital options like you've discussed. Mm. And we've recently implemented what we call a slice of advice where you can book in for a chat with us mm. without actually having to engage a lawyer for a whole matter and without oh, the obligation great. of having to do that because sometimes if you have that consultation you might mm. feel like you need to keep going down that path yes yeah because sometimes you, yes you start that and you think oh god what have i opened up here and, what, mm. and what's it going to cost me so that's a really good solution for agents that's terrific okay so a business wants to uh, perhaps sell mm -hmm. how would they go about valuing what they have built yeah, we, we work very closely with some valuers um, mm. on that. And it sometimes comes as a surprise to a lot of agencies that are sales only, that there's actually not a huge amount of value when you try to sell a sales mm. on, only business because often the goodwill is attached to the human, to the yeah. principal. Yeah. Um, so the value is really in the rent roll. Um, right. And valuers look at a heap of different things to determine that value and it's generally a multiplier times the um, annual management fees is how you get to the value of your agency and that multiplier that's the million dollar question about which one is it i've seen multiples between two so two times your earnings mm. all the way up to four and a half times earnings so wow. you can see what a difference that makes. And that's on the same size rent roll. That's not even adding other managements in. Mm -hmm. That's literally the multiple. And there's a heap of things that will determine what that multiple is. Like, for example, if you've got um, properties that are spread out through a very big geographical area, the multiple might be less. Um, if you've got multiple owners, and there could be risks there because if a buyer buys and you've got one owner, I've got one at the moment where it's a big rent roll, the owner of um, the agency has developer friends mm -hmm. and some of these developers have a hundred if not more properties in that rent roll. So right. a buyer sees that as risky if that one person leaves, there goes a hundred properties. So right. that so would that get would, valued a bit less. So it would be worth less, right. Okay. Mm. So I'm thinking it would be productive for an agent that's thinking that it's their um, retirement plan mm -hmm. to sell their rent roll asset, to talk to you well, or even at the beginning stages of building that rent roll, to understand the factors that influence the value of that rent roll, such yes. as properties spread a long way off, mm -hmm. which takes more management time, etc. and one landlord that perhaps owns a lot of, that might not like the colour of your eyes when you buy the business or something. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bigger risk. It is. Yeah. So yeah. those risk factors need to be understood by business owners so that they can shape their rent roll potentially to being the most valuable it could be. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going through that with my own business yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, I, don't oh, plan, I don't plan on selling for a very long time, but okay. I want to make sure that all the things I'm doing, I'm working on the right elements of the business mm. to increase its value mm. for that long term. Yeah. Um, and it's not something that a lot of people think about. They think about the exit as they want to retire. That's right, yes. Or suddenly there might be an offer made. Mm. Um, but the way I think about it is a bit like if you're selling a home. Mm. If you just have the house as is and suddenly have to sell it, mm. you're subject to market forces. Whereas yeah. if you plan when you're going to sell um, and you have the time to perhaps renovate it, if you know that the market wants a four bedroom with two bathroom, but you've only got a three better, then of course, you know, you, you can make all of those changes. You can do those right. upgrades. Right. It's the same, same with the, with the business. Role. Yeah, absolutely. And you said the rent roll is the only value in that business primarily. That's correct. Primarily. Sometimes yeah. there can be some goodwill attached 
to the sales side if there's really good systems and processes and automated marketing in place. Um, but generally speaking, it's that the rent roll is that nest egg that you're sitting on. Okay, well that's an important point. Perhaps for agents that don't have a rent roll, as much as I've urged them to do that, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there is potentially value in the sales side of the business if there's systems and procedures and that the buyer can see that there's a, a mechanism to create sales mm -hmm. ongoing other than his particular input. Yes. Yeah, right, okay, I get it. Mm. The other thing I want to talk to you about today is privacy and uh, why that's, I mean, you mentioned to me when we talked prior to filming today how important that is for agents. Could you elaborate on that for me? Um, there are quite a few reforms being tried to be pushed through. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, um, if an agency is under the $3 million revenue mark, then you don't technically have to comply with the Privacy Act. However, what we've been finding is if for example, you've got a property management business and you use the national tenancy databases such as Ticker. Um, I'm not bashing on Ticker, they're all the same. Mm, um, sure. Or if you're signing up to a CRM provider or some software, then most of those contracts actually say that you have promised that provider that you're going to comply with the Privacy Act. So even if you're under $3 million, oh, okay. you might have accidentally opted in essentially. Right, so you're obligated in that way other than the three million, right, okay. Yes. So be careful, okay, so that's a very important aspect. And and there's a lot of, and, and you can be fined, there's a real risk attached to this if you don't get it right. Yeah, so the fines are $2 million. <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, just wait, um, there were new laws. Oh, there's more? Yeah, there's more, it's worse. Um, oh in, in December, there were new laws that came in Mm. that if you have um, repeated breaches or if you show that you just haven't even cared or don't don't even try to comply, there's now what's called the super fines and they're $50 million. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't have a spare $50 I think, million. I think around. the first one would probably fix up a lot of agents. Anyway. So we're talking mainly to small business owners. Yeah. So I mean, $2 I million, have... dollars, how do they come up with a two... I mean, is it has someone been fined $2 million? Um, you don't know. Well, out of our clients, not. Yeah, not yet. And so when there's a, a data breach, even though that sounds like a very bad thing and there's huge fines that can go with the data breaches, mm. if you do the right thing mm. and you follow the process set out under the privacy laws, mm. um, so far none of my clients have been fined. We've gone through the process. Oh, okay. We said this is what happened. We notified as we should. Mm. Um, the commissioner investigates, um, and so far, because we've shown that these these are the things we're going to do to make sure it never happens again, and we're training our staff. Okay. So far, none of my clients have been fined, touched wood. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you need to be calling this woman if you <laughs> you want to know about your legal obligations and your real estate business owner. You really do. Anything else you want to say today that's important to a business owner? Um, I think. We do also have um, a lot of free resources on our website. For mm. example, privacy training I is on there. Mm. Um, so you can go to our website and get some of those free resources, especially that privacy training, if um, your agency perhaps hasn't gone down that path yet. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially it's about um, getting ahead of things, mm. making sure you're prepared mm. uh, so yep. that you know that you, you're covered. I'm hearing that. All right, so if an agent wants to have their free 15 minute, 10 or 15 did you say? 10, 15? but it often goes for 15. <laughs> <laughs> Half an hour chat. <laughs> How do they contact you? Uh, you can email us at letschat at onolegal.com.au or on our website, um, onolegal.com.au, at the top right hand um, corner of the website, there is a button where you can book directly into our diary um, to, to claim that free 10 minute chat. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today. That's great information. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you, having Kristen. me. Thanks, Paul. Cheers. Cheers.